scripture reading coming from missionary Irene Jackson. Let's say amen for them to stand in our building. God, we thank you right now for being so good. God, we thank you for being so kind. God, we thank you for being so merciful. God, we thank you for another day that you have allowed us to see. God, we thank you for the activities of our limbs, God. We thank you for bringing us over the dangerous highways, God. We thank you, God, for waking us up in our right mind, God. Now, God, as we continue in our service, God, we ask that your anointing fill this place, God.
your gender, your educational status, but at one point or another, we're going to deal with some type of condition. Now, I have three points to make. Point one, first, we have to understand your condition. We can walk around dealing with condition and never understanding the roots of that condition. We learn to live with it and adapt without even trying to figure out a solution. We will make an excuse for why we deal with the things that we're dealing with and allow it to lay dormant on the inside of us and never fully understand the condition we are dealing with. But when we understand our condition, it will help ease our condition, manage our condition, and take control over that condition. The thoughts the Lord has towards us is of peace and not evil. So we can find peace in the midst of that storm. We can find peace knowing that my condition is not going to defeat me. We can find peace that my condition is not going to give me a nervous breakdown. And I can find peace that my condition is leading me to a victorious conclusion. Point number two, I got to pray in the midst of my condition. I got to pray without ceasing. If I pray and have faith that God is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do, my prayer will be answered. God sees every prayer. He sees every tear. Even when you walk around pacing the floor at night, God say, I hear you, my daughter. I hear you, my son. The condition of your prayer is either going to close some doors or it's going to open some doors. God's going to close doors that man can't open, and he will open doors that man can't close. But either direction God take you, he's going to lead you to your conclusion, which is on the other side. If I could bring these two quickly, Hezekiah did not allow his condition of death to control his conclusion. The woman with the issue of blood did not allow her condition to control her conclusion. But your conclusion do not control you. We have to control our conclusion. God is a doctor in the sick room. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. And God will even have the bill collected to call you and say that you have a balance paid in full. Point number three, expect your condition to change. We don't know when God will move, but the prayer, we have to know that he will answer. We got to trust that God will answer every prayer and he is on time. Hezekiah did not know when God was going to answer, but he turned his face to the wall and believed that God will answer his prayer. The woman with the issue of blood did not know how he was going to do it, but she was looking for a miracle with just one touch. We have to trust and have faith that God is going to bring us through each condition that we face. Trust God to do exactly what he said that he is going to do. He will bring us to the most impossible conclusion. Because when man says there is an, it's impossible, God says, I am a God of impossible. I just make everything you do to do impossible. We got to trust God that he will help us endure every conclusion until he release us until our conclusion. You tell your neighbor, my condition is not my conclusion. And 1 John 5 and 14, it says, In this is the 
terrorism, the economy, hallelujah, and even diseases where the antibiotics can't even cure them, hallelujah. Nothing seems to get done, hallelujah. Congress, hallelujah, the president, hallelujah. You may be dealing with personal issues, hallelujah. Job loss, health problems, child acting up, or even dealing with the loved one's death, hallelujah. It may seem overwhelming, hallelujah. I know, hallelujah, because on February 11th of this year, I lost my husband, hallelujah. After, and about three weeks after losing my husband, hallelujah, I lost my aunt. It seemed like the devil was hitting me every which way, hallelujah. But I remember Psalms 46 and 1. God is my refuge and strength. A very present help and trust. Psalms 34 and 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Hallelujah. We must realize that no matter what the enemy throws at us, if we're equipped, hallelujah, with God in us, hallelujah, we have to put on the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. Jesus told us that we would deal with some bad things, hallelujah, but that he would take care of us. Isaiah 40 and 29 says, he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Then the 31st verse, one of my favorites, he says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings and eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. So we must look to God and his word. Hallelujah. Get your emotions together. Keep calm and trust God. I know because I had to. And I'm still doing it. And I'm going to continue to do it. Hallelujah. He'll bring deliverance to any situation. Romans 8 and 28 says, and we know that all things, not some things, but all things, work together for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. So whatever you're going through, trouble on your job, trust God. Health problems, trust God. Family giving you trouble, trust God. You're down to your last dime, trust God. And if you lose a family member, hallelujah, you got to trust God. And when the enemy, when the enemy is attacked, and you're about to give up. Just remember, through it all, trust God. He will see you through every time. Praise God. Praise God. I come to announce in the house tonight that there is a miracle in the middle. There's a miracle in the middle. And the, the scripture is Joshua 3 and 17. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed and cleaned over the Jordan. The support, supporting scripture is Hebrews 12 and 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So here we have in Joshua 3, we have the Israelites who are familiar with oppression. They're familiar with depression. They're familiar with struggle. They're familiar with lack. And here God tells the people of God, this time tomorrow you're going to have to get up because it's time to cross over. But when they got ready to cross over, they met opposition of flood waters. And so many of us are the same way. The Lord that many of you sitting here tonight are looking at flood waters and you need a miracle. You can't go back to where you left, but you can't move forward because you're familiar with oppression. You're familiar with lack. You're familiar with pain. You're familiar with hurt. And you are so focused on the cross that you've been bearing that you have forsaken your right to cross over. But the Lord said the flood water should not prevent you from moving. The flood water should be the activation and the inspiration that if the Lord can part the Red Sea, surely he can part the Jordan. So what ended up happening is that Joshua began to decree the word of the Lord. And so the people begin to gather with all of their baggage. They begin to gather their husbands, their wives, their children, their tents, their oil, their wheat, everything that they had, they carried it on their back. And then the ark of the covenant, the priest went before the people. And as the people, the priest went before the people, the people began to follow. And as the people began to follow, the waters began to separate. And so the Lord said, yeah, you may be facing opposition and you're trying to make a decision. Lord, am I going to walk on the water or is the water going to part? And the Lord said, I'm telling you today that the water is going to part. I'm telling you today that the 
bless you, God bless you. At this time, we're going to greetings. We're going to have greetings by District Missionary Cynthia Rainey. Let's say man for her. <laughs> Chairman of our program committee for this convention. God bless you. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. I don't stop there. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. We greet each of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on behalf of our state supervisor, Mother Jeanette Watkins. And I can also say on behalf of the program committee, we say welcome to the 61st, 65th annual state women's convention crusade. Yes, yes. I think this year is God's unlimited power makes unlimited accomplishments possible. God's unlimited power makes unlimited accomplishments possible. How many of y'all believe that? Everything is possible with God. And as we celebrate the 65th year, the year 65 stands for love, mercy, unity, and grace. And we're going to seek all of that on this week. We came to lift up the name of the Lord. We came to give God the glory because the glory is due Him and we honor him above all things. We want you to enjoy the service. We want you to be blessed, delivered, and set free. Whatever you need from God is in the house. Whatever you want from the Lord is here. So we hope that all of your spiritual needs are met as we continue on this week in the service. Thank you. And now we will have our host pastor in the person of pastor. He is Pastor Dennis Gerard Rogers Sr. Come greet us, Pastor Rogers, in your own way. Let's say amen for Pastor Rogers. Y'all help me just a moment. Son says, come on and give the Lord a high praise. That's it. Will you put your hands together for me?
please stand at this time. We're just happy that you took the sign from your busy schedule to come and be with us during our 65th Holy Women's Crusade. Don't you feel like praising him? Yeah. I tell them all the time. They don't have to give me a microphone. The spirit is high. And I feel like doing like mother. I feel like just shouting. Yeah. We do know that we have a program to abide by. But we want you to know that we appreciate every one of you who have graced this setting tonight. But this service could not be what you and God would have it to be if you were not in the house. And we thank you for it. The pulpit will be recognized later.
the Honorable Bishop Frank Jefferson Anderson Jr. The Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever. And Paul said in these words, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But Christ lives in me. In the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Oh, God is a good God. Mighty good God. We greet Arkansas, second jurisdiction family, Church of God in Christ. And I pray that God bless whatever be upon you. Listen, the Lord has blessed our jurisdiction since 2009. God has elevated one from among us to lead this great body of believers to greater heights in the Lord Jesus Christ. The National Church has been infused with the wisdom and knowledge and the financial support and presence of the second jurisdiction of Arkansas. And all because the people have prayed for this great leader. He's one who has served us from the evangelist department through many other ministries, and now he serves us as the presiding officer of this great church. And I thank God for this great man of God, no stranger to us, but it's my extreme pleasure to introduce to some of you and present to others this awesome man of God. Can he preach? Yes, he can. Can he sing? Yes. Yes, he can. He can. And a few days from now, a few days from now, Mother Watkins and this great women convention along with all the departments of this second jurisdiction. We're going to convene in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Yeah. By the jurisdictional holy convocation. And in preparation for honoring this great man of God, on tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock, all the jurisdictional uh, systems and supervisors of the women department, the district superintendents and district missionaries and the auxiliary leaders. We'll all be meeting here at 6 o'clock to meet our leader. And we make great plans for the jurisdictional holy convocation. We want to meet him at 6 o'clock on tomorrow evening because he's going to be preaching to us tomorrow night. Amen. Amen. And brethren, we're going to wear our class B attire. Is that all right? Praise God. Because we're going to hear a word from the Lord. And I want wood, if you would, please. Stand with me now. And receive this notable man of God. The Honorable Bishop Frank Jefferson Anderson, Jr. Will you welcome him to the podium with a great hand of praise at this time? Thank God. <laughs> With the choir say, I got to praise and I got to work it out. I hear somebody trying to play. Amen. How many of you love the Lord? Yeah. I mean, you really love Him. Uh, if you tell your neighbor, I don't care if you know it. I love Him with all of my heart, soul, mind, and body. And tell the neighbors that I love you too. Come on, tell them I love you too. Because if I don't love you, God is not accepting 
my love for him. He said, how can you love me who you've not seen and hate your brother who you see? Declare that you are alive and the truth ain't in you. Tell the Lord, thank you. All right, before you take the seat, just look down your row and say, neighbor, I'm so glad that I'm on the road that you're on. And it's no accident that we're on this road. Now, this road is a praising road and it's a giving road. And if you didn't come to praise it, Convention, praise the Lord. We thank God. Come on, give it up for our supervisor. Would you stand up, brother? Would you stand up? Would you stand up? Come on, give it to her. Give it to her. missionaries would you stand all the district missionaries and your assistants praise the lord amen i want to know if the superintendent see that the first night all of the district missionaries are in the house amen amen if they can do it we can do it possible. 
And we, the Women Department of the Arkansas Second Jurisdiction, Church of God in Christ, welcome you, delegates, to the 65th Annual State Women's want to give honor to God who is the head of my life. But not only is God the head of my life, he is my life. Yes. For truly it is in him that I live, I move, and I have my being. I can do nothing without him, but I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I certainly want to extend greetings and honor to our esteemed leader, our jurisdictional prelate, Bishop Frank Jefferson Anderson, Jr., and our precious First Lady, Joyce Anderson. In his absence, we do honor our father, Bishop Donnie L. Lindsay, Sr., and Madam we're thankful tonight for the Board of Administrative Assistants, the Board of Superintendents, to all of the jurisdictional officers and officials. Certainly, I give honor and thanks to my Board of Administrative Assistants and to all of the district missionaries, yes. to the district missionaries emeriti, and to all of the assistant district missionaries, to all of the women department officials and workers, to the entire staff. This year, as we plan for this women convention, we follow the leading of our national church. And we focus on the power of the Holy Ghost. Because he is the third person of the Trinity. It is by the indwelling of the Holy Ghost that we are enabled as people of God to execute our kingdom assignments. There is only one baptism. But there are many refillings. And I don't know about you, but I said, God, fill me again. And as we prepare for this meeting, we charge the prayer warriors of the second jurisdiction to lead us in a 21-day prayer journey. And the prayer warriors led us out Every district missionary was asked to get with their district superintendent and set aside a place and a time to culminate the 21-day prayer journey. And I believe the majority of them did just that. Because today, today, I was overwhelmed. I was overjoyed to see the turnout of the saints and the sunshine baby yeah. and the parents. They were awesome. God came into the house and he blessed us through our children. It was a beautiful setting. And tonight, once again, the saints have gathered from near and far. You have come to be a part of this great service. This evangelistic explosion. Oh my God. I tell you, these candidates made me godly proud for lack of a better They made me feel so good because they are representing the church of God in Christ. And these young ladies will be licensed on Friday morning. They were awesome. I want you all to know, I was just elated to see how God 
is using you and moving in your life, I want you to be encouraged. Now I'm not going to be before you long, but I had to say that. And I want to say that we're going higher. Amen. We're going higher. Amen. We're going to have evangelistic messages coming even after this. But I want to recognize right now, just want them to stay in. Because on Friday night, I want to give them an opportunity to share with you the titles of their books. And if they have books with them, you can support them by purchasing one. But we have young women in our jurisdiction, Bishop, who have recognized the gift that God has given them to write. And they have actually authored books. And I feel that we should be thankful when we have this kind of gifting among us and we should encourage them. I know we have poets. I, I know we have singers. I know we have musicians. We have dancers. But tonight we want to focus on our authors. And those that are here tonight, I want them to stand. And on Friday night, they will have an opportunity to share a little bit about their books. With all of our new authors that are present tonight, please stand all over the audience. say anything tonight, just want the people to see you. I am so thankful and I want you all to know I am godly proud of you and what you are doing. And I want you to continue in the work. I want you to continue to write as God gives you a, a, a additional books. Write them. And I want to make it known to the National Church because the National Church recognizes our new authors. And I too want to recognize the giftings and the talents that we have in the second jurisdiction of our for you. This is missionary Renita Hook of the Carlisle District. This is soon to be missionary Shaylaquare of the Carlisle District. And this is district missionary Doug Brewer of the Metropolitan District. Amen. And now I am going to take my seat and turn this mic back into the hands of our awesome presider who is doing a wonderful job today. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. When I come back later, I'm going to recognize our program committee and our workshop committee so that you'll know who those people are that actually assisted me in putting this service together. God bless you. Come on, let's appreciate Mother Watkins. And God bless our new authors. Amen, amen. We're moving up. Amen. Amen. It's going to get better and better. We're going to be favored by the Ministry of Music by our jurisdictional choir. And immediately following the jurisdictional choir, we will have the presentation of the speakers. We have a dynamic, dynamite duo on tonight who will give us the word of God. But presenting them will be the fragrance of our jurisdiction, none other than Mother Lady Joyce Anderson. She's going to come in her own way. Come on, let's appreciate her. And this time the choir.
know that you have someone you can go to when you need it, when your friends are not there, your relatives are not there, you got G. Hey! Hallelujah! And since we know we got Jesus, I want you to help me with this song. I tried the Lord one day.
these several things I know about, I know she's the wife of our elders and pastors and elders, counselor, 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 Timothy Hobbs. Yes. Praise God. And uh, one thing I know, she loves her children. She can have two children, a boy and a girl, and she always stood right close to them. Praise God. And she loves the shop. <laughs> Praise God. But she is, and I also have seen her many times with Mother Lindsay. Helping Mother Lindsay. That's so awesome. She knows what to do. She is a minister's wife also. Praise God. And we're going to call her at this time and just listen to what she had to say to us. Sister Hopkins. Amen. Whew. I was sitting there thinking, Lord, what am I going to do here? She done worked up that Holy Ghost ladder, and I go in, as my son said, but I'm going to go and do what I was told to do. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, God, you're my strength, and you're my redeemer. Times of refreshing. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. The word from God, Mother, thank you for this opportunity. I've been nervous all day, but I try not to be. But she said, there's a word in you. And God immediately dropped in my spirit when I hung up the phone. Refresh. Times of refreshing. Acts 3 and 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. We've already been refreshed, but I just want to explain to you just a little bit. Refresh. Defined as a verb means to give new strength or energy to, to reinvigorate. Defined as a noun, it means to, as an act or function of updating a screen display. So all I want to do tonight is encourage us to renew our strength, mount up with wings as eagle, run and not be weary, walk and not faint, as we update our spiritual lifestyle by seeking a refresh of the Holy Ghost. For the question has been asked, in Acts 19 and 2, have you received the Holy Ghost? Yes, you believe. Yeah. Now, we would all agree that when we need a physical refreshing, we take a weekend getaway, a spa day, a vacation to the beach, or a mental wellness day so that we can renew and refresh. And most of us just don't know what we would do or how we would survive if we forgot to recharge those cell phones, those iPads, those laptops. That's why you're always looking for a charging a pad or a hotspot. Even the barren earth in the winter welcomes the refreshing springtime. So what about our spiritual life? It too can become barren and need a refreshing by the presence of the Lord. Men, first is our repentance. Many of us want the benefits of being called saints without repenting. In fact, the very... Don't tell me that. In fact, the very concept of repentance encompasses... She coming behind me. Not just a turning away from sin... But it's a turning toward God. When we repent, God promises not only to wipe our sins, but to bring spiritual refreshment. Just like a cool drink of water on a hot summer day. Now, repentance may seem painful because it is hard for us to give up certain sins. Or we have a tendency, Mother, to categorize sins. But 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 says that if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my faith, turn from their wicked ways, then God said he would hear from heaven and would forgive the sin and will heal our land. How many of us know that the healing needs to be personal? When it becomes personal, we'll do like David did in Psalm 51. We'll say, oh, have mercy on me, God, according to your loving kindness. Blot out all of my transgressions, create in me a clean heart, bring that right spirit within me and restore to me the joy of our salvation. Somebody shout, times are refreshing. And then E is for excitement. When we have repented of our sins, we want to tell everybody about what God has done for us. We used to sing a song, somebody's soul need to catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. Somebody's soul need to catch on fire and burn with the Holy Ghost. Now there's something about a natural fire that will get your attention. So don't you know that a spiritual fire will get the attention of the world? The Bible records a story about a woman in the well. She went to draw some refreshing water and there she met a man. 
unlike any of the other men she was used to, this man's name was Jesus. And she asked Jesus for some water. And then, uh, uh, Jesus asked her for some water. And she told Jesus, don't you know the Jews and Samaritans don't have nothing to do with? I'm going to paraphrase it, y'all. Jesus said, woman, if thou only knew who I am, you would ask me for water and you would thirst no more. Hallelujah. So the woman got water from Jesus. And out of her belly began to flow rivers of living water. And she ran with excitement and said, come see a man that has told me everything that I have ever done. First evangelist missionaries. Now how many of us are excited about what Jesus is doing in our life and willing to tell others that Jesus make a difference and that there is no secret what God can do. What he does for others, he'll do the same thing for you. Efforts for fellowship, relationships that flourish, they take time. They take communication. They take attentiveness. We come bold into the throne of grace where we can commune with God through prayer, whether on our knees or in our hearts. Prayer is the lifeblood of the saint. It's where we offer God our thanks. We express our concerns. We ask him for help. We intercede for others. And then we fellowship with God by reading our Bible. You just can't get around it. You got to meditate on it day and night. You got to hide it in your heart so you may not sin against him. You got to study it to show that they were proved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. We fellowship with God by serving him in the home, home ministry, in our communities, in our jobs, in our schools. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And yes, we serve him in the local church, district, jurisdiction, and national. In Hebrews 10, 25, and 8, it says, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves, uh, as together as the manner of some is, I was glad, Psalm 122 and 1, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now that ain't nothing but churching. Fellowshipping with God as we fellowship with one another. R is for renewing. Romans 12 and 2 tells us that be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Philippians 2 and 5 tells us to let this mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. Now, what was the mind of Jesus? It was nothing but to do the will of God. So what should be our renewed mind? Nothing but to do the will of God. The anthem of the church of God in Christ was born out of a yes, Lord. Yes, when I don't feel like it. Yes, Lord. Yes, when I don't understand it. Yes, Lord. Any moment I can't say yes, when I struggle to say yes, we got to do like Jesus did. We got to pray until it becomes nevertheless. Not my will, but thy will be done. Working on the outside, bringing about a change in my life, a refreshed woman of Christ. He is for evidence, equipped, and empowered. And when we are refreshed with the Holy Ghost, not only do we have the evidence by the speaking of tongues, but by the indwelling spirit of a renewed life, which produces the fruit of the spirit is found in Galatians 5, 22, 23. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. A refresh in the Holy Ghost will equip us with our spiritual gifts. God-given abilities for service, not for us to, to say, look at me, look what I'm doing, but for the edifying of the church and to serve God effectively for God's glory. Teaching you how to understand, how to apply scripture in your daily life so that you can have an effective, effective prayer life. Then the Holy Ghost takes up residence in our hearts, empowering us to live an entirely new life of love, fellowship, and service to God, leading us in all paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Someone should say, refresh me, Lord. Times are refreshing. S, separation from sin, and I'm almost done. We, this is what we say. Some of us read it, some of us know it in our heart. My son convinced me to know this because I know the Pledge of Allegiance. We believe in the sanctified power of the Holy Spirit by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy and separated life in this very, what, present world. We recite it, we say it, we read it, but in John 3.16, oh, and sin separates us from God. But in John 3.16, we are told that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And Jesus, Jesus was willing to die for us while we were yet sinners to die on the cross to pay for our sin so we could be brought back into fellowship with God. So then overcoming sin, separating yourself from sin, is not about you trying harder and harder, but it's really about total surrender to Jesus' power and control. Living a life separated from sin is 
all about what God is able and willing to do within us and through the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Our part is to choose you this day, whom you will serve, to walk in the Spirit, to set our mind on the things of the Spirit, to put to death the deeds of this body, to be led by the Spirit, to live the life God desires for us to live. Now God is able to keep that which is committed unto Him and fully able to help us achieve a life separated from sin. The Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost. They were singing about it. Mother was talking about it. So I believe that was my confirmation. Another statement. We believe that the baptism of the Holy Ghost, according to Acts 2 and 4, is given to believers who ask for it. That's what we say. So we need the baptism, the filling, the outpouring, the overflowing, the refilling, and then the filling. Being filled with the Holy Ghost is not a man-made experience. It's not dry and unemotional, but it's a time of refreshing, bringing you into a more intimate, life-changing encounter with the living God. That's why we sing, you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Bound, tormented, sick or insane, or lame, for the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. You won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. So to be filled with the Holy Ghost is to be filled with the presence and power of God. Although we are living in changing times, our refreshing comes from an unchangeable God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's omnipotent, all power. He's omniscient, all man. He's omnipresent, everywhere, all the time. So neither is the feeling a one-time only experience. You see, when you purchase a new car, and we all get that little complimentary full tank of gas, we want it to last us a long time. But you know what? We have to use the car to get to our daily activity. So every now and then, you have to stop at what I used to call the feeling stations. Some of us stop by weekly. Some of us stop by monthly. But it doesn't really matter. You got to go back to the filling station. Because you need a fill up because you've been using the gas. So we need a refilling because we've been using the gas. The Holy Ghost will guide us. The Holy Ghost will lead us. The Holy Ghost will teach us. Now the conclusion, Bishop, I'm almost done. Last page. So it is with the Holy Ghost. Being filled is more about an ongoing of God's spirit working in our lives, not just a one-time experience. So as we live our faith in Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, whatever you want to say it, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, but He is the third part of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He increasingly controls us. He fills us in our life. He is our convictor. He's our teacher. He's our guider. He's our reminder. He's our equipper. He's our empowerer. He's our teacher, he's our helper, and he's our constant life companion. For Jesus said in John 14 and 16, he said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Hallelujah. Finally, the Holy Ghost, I like this part, is our deal sealer. He sealed the deal. Hallelujah. It's kind of like when you're playing a, 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 a game of a, a what's that I call it? A bowling. You know when you when you got that and you follow through and you know it's going to be a you know it's going to you know what you do because you know you don't seal the deal. You don't even watch. You just turn around and you walk all the way and you the store. So it's a seal sealer. It's an earnest deposit. You know when you pay a deposit on something it's yours. So it's an earnest deposit, a down payment, a guarantee. Now life insurance takes you to the grave. Woo! I feel that one. Life insurance takes you to the grave. But life assurance takes you in your grave. so that our arrival in the Lord's presence is guaranteed after this life. In June 24, 
and 24, the conclusion of the times of refreshing is summed up like this. Now unto him. Woo! Now unto him who is able, he's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding, woo! with exceeding joy to the uh, 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 I'm sorry, y'all. To only wise God, I say, I'm trying to speed up. Be glory. Be glory. Mother called me and left me a voicemail. 
I, I started not to call her back. <laughs> and then when I did call her back, I didn't want her to answer. <laughs> but she did. And I said, well, you weren't supposed to answer. Because I was going to tell her I couldn't do this. But when I was studying that, when you get a chance, uh, the word of the Lord came to me, living beneath your word. Beneath your worth. All of us can relate to a computer. We live in computer age, and many of us have read just enough to get us going, but not enough to fully understand all that the software and what the computer can do. Elder Sweat. The only way that you can you're going to discover the full power of your computer and its software is by becoming more familiar with what it can do. If we apply the same analogy to the Ephesian, we can begin to understand the content of Paul's prayer. So when you read Ephesians Ephesian 1, 15 through 23, if you haven't read it before, I don't know why you haven't read it, but it's talking about Paul praying. We can begin to understand the contents of Paul's prayer in Ephesians, his prayer is motivated by their faith in the Lord Jesus and their love for all the saints. He has heard about their faith in the Lord Jesus. They have the computer. He has also heard about their love for all the saints. They are using the software. Yet, they just don't know how powerful both of them really are. They're sent this powerful machine loaded with all sorts of information and capabilities, but much of it goes unused simply because we have not fully familiarized ourselves with what it can do. They have confessed a saving faith in Jesus Christ. That's good. They have also demonstrated a vibrant love for one another. That too is very good. But if they are to get a real handle on God's power, they must deepen their faith and broaden their love. Yes. Yes. Underlying Paul's prayer is his conviction that the more we learn about God's character, the more we will discover about his power on our behalf. Yes. The more we discover about God's power on our behalf, the more we are able to get a handle on it. Yes. To get a handle on God's power, we must familiarize ourselves. I'm going to give you four quick points. This, don't let this book fool you. Right. Tell your neighbor, she ain't long. Right. Say, go ahead and pray for her now. Because she's going to be through in a minute. <laughs> Number one, the responsibilities of privilege. Before the creation of the world, God chose us in Christ. He knows us. He knows how we are made and what makes us tick. What makes us do the things we do. He knows chose to adopt us as his children through Christ. Yeah. Our election by God is a privilege. Yeah. At the same time, that privilege implies a responsibility. Yeah. God knows us, but how well do we know him? Yeah. An even better question would be, how well do we want to know him? Yeah. Living beneath your word. We must be careful to make sure that our knowledge of Jesus Christ goes beyond simple familiarity with the facts about him. Our salvation doesn't depend on knowing the facts about Jesus. It depends on knowing him personally. Matthew 7, 21, Jesus said these very disturbing words. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. from praying that the Holy Spirit would help them find even new ways to know Christ better. It is the nature of a personal relationship to grow in knowledge, intimacy, and trust. The Spirit is given to help us deepen our knowledge of Christ by giving us God-directed common sense and insight. The goal is not so much that we become PhDs in our knowledge of Christ, and it is that we become lifelong learners. Disciples who continually make it our aim to know Christ more and more intimately throughout our lives. To get a hand on God's power, we must familiarize ourselves with the responsibility of privilege. We must also familiarize ourselves with the second 
point. The reason for our existence. Real hope is founded on trust in the person in whom my hope is placed. If we do not fully trust God for our salvation, then our hope in him is hollow. According to Colossians 1.27, the hope to which God has called us is rooted in the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to what he says. I hear my brother-in-law. God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now that's good news. That means if on some days I'm in a blue mood and think that all is lost, it isn't. That's because the hope of my salvation doesn't depend on what I feel. It rests on who Jesus is. Once that was done, the man took the saw back home, 
only to return three days later, the man said, it's still a piece of junk. It's a little bit better, but not much. I cut down five trees, but you said I could cut down 40. I want my money back. The store owner was confounded. I, I, I really don't understand. This is a good piece of equipment. Let's try it out. When that he pulled a starter rope and the chainsaw roared to life. With a look of complete surprise, the man, the man demanded of the store owner, what's that noise? And we 
because God is in control? A church where God is really real? Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening Pentecostal service, 7 p.m. Midweek service, Thursday, 7 p.m.